well, they'll be blocked because the leaders around now, maybe this is sending jitters as far as uh, the latest development is concerned with the youngest uh, Senegal, Senegal's president-elect. So we shall be discussing this with our panelists this morning, right? But before we head there, Peter Kagwanja, you not commented on uh, the doctors applied right now, just briefly. Now, I, I think the, <coughs> what I would say about the health, the crisis in the health sector, including the strike by doctors, um, is really uh, symptomatic. It's, it's, it's indicative of the rot in our own system. And I'm using the, the word rot or decay, if you mm -hmm. wish, deliberately. Because we know what we need to do. But we have decided to do the opposite. We know. And we, we, we are not doing the opposite because we don't have uh, what should remind us of what we need to do as a country. And I listened to Moshimiwa Farah here, and I was really uh, interested with what he's talked about, that the Kenya in the past, in other words, at our age, we, we started becoming nostalgic about the glorious past. Mm. And we are just 60. Mm. Uh, and, and, and the glorious past is because we knew what we wanted. And, and we sang it every day. That's what we do every day in our national anthem. Mm. God bless this, our country. Yes, yes. Right? So we, uh, we know our people. And then we move around and talk about justice. We talk about, you know, justice. Uh, we move there and talk about unity, equality, and freedom. So we embrace the core values of humanity. And when we came to our dream as a country, we identified only three issues. And the, the succeeding president, particularly the younger ones, have just decided to derail the country completely by the, behaving like the NGOs. I mean, this country is an NGO, or it is a United Nations uh, agency. This country is larger than an agency, is larger than an NGO. And our goals are threefold, and they, they were stated very clearly. Our three enemies are ignorance, creating a people who understand themselves and their environment. The second issue is disease, because we live in an environment that, has, that is disease prone. There some diseases are within our environment, others are brought. And the third one is poverty. poverty. And poverty here talks about economy. Economy, economy, economy. Get people jobs, whether they're employed in the, in the industry or they're employed in the farms. Let people wake up in the morning to do something not to stay at home and be idle in whichever else. Now, whether you start talking about, oh, my priority is housing, oh, my priority is this, that's nonsense. The three issues are this. And what are we doing about them? We have just talked about education here, that schools are closing early because they have no capitation. Can you wake up? Smell the coffee. Mm -hmm. We are now talking about doctors who has taken who have taken an oath to secure lives now being in the streets and there are people in the theater waiting to be operated this is what you hear can you wake up and drink i mean smell the coffee mm -hmm. and thirdly we are talking about the vast bulk of our young people now waking up to do nothing yeah. and it is and we have not declared a state of emergency in this country I don't know where, what else we are doing. All those other things we are waking up at five o'clock uh, to do as you know, leaders of this country, I think it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Because these are the three priorities. And they are in our national anthem, they are in our constitution, they are in the books of our founding fathers and mothers. Then, wh wh the, the, and, and now, instead of calling for a major national conference to discuss our crisis, now we are talking about closing our parastatos, right? Mm. Closing our bodies. Now, the moment, uh, just because we have closed our parastatos, and on this matter, which where we differ, just because we close our parastatos does not mean that the need it was created to solve has been solved. What we are trying to do is to hide problems under the carpet. To be honest with you, let us have a clear thinking. Parastatos are not supposed to make profit. They are like bridges. They're supposed to offer services. Governments are not about making profit because they, they make profit when their population is rich and can give taxes. Uh, when you talk about Kenya Airways, Ethiopian Airways, and so on, what we are saying is, is an, it has a larger purpose than just making profit. That's why we now have the private sector. And the private sector is supposed to make profit and we tax it. 
So in our thinking, we need to have a straight thinking. You should not as a leader stand up and tell us that Kenya Airways is not making profit. You should tell us Kenya Airways is functioning. That's it, because it's our national career. When you are in London and you see Kenya Airways running, the, what it does to your heart is what it is paying for. That's the profit. As a Kenyan in the United States, in Washington, you see Kenya Airways running and coming with the Kenyan flag. That is what makes you, when you see our president getting to meetings with our own national career, the way the Ethiopians do, when they are arriving in place in style, that is when you start now creating a nation. So what am I saying? Mm -hmm. We need to go to the drawing board and think. We have erected leaders, from, particularly in the last 30 years, without who have no idea, no clue about the fabrics and the DNA of this country. And that's why our medical system is in rot, our education system is in rot, and the vast bulk of our energetic young men and women are at home as we speak. Mm -hmm. Let me just add a little bit. We need, um, as policy, everyone who gets into positions of responsibility, starting with the members of parliament and cabinet ministers and PSs, all of them should be taken to school for a month. Yeah. Maybe National Defense College. <laughs> to be Kenya trained. Kenya School of Government. No, National Defense College. National <laughs> Defense. <laughs> or strategic okay. interests. Yeah, mm. to, to yes. know what Kenya's interests are. Okay. Yes. National interests, yes. security, and all those things. Indeed, and yeah. how to intermarry them and see that <coughs> we have people being put in positions who have no clue mm. as to what they are doing there. Mm. Yeah. And here they are there. And then you expect the country to move forward. It can't. So the, we need a reorientation of everything. And starting with the ministers and the MPs, before they take the oath of office, yeah. go and get trained on what the national interests are. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, to be honest on that, uh, very quickly, on, on this, the National Defense University started a course three years ago mm -hmm. to train Kenyans on from all walks of life. I have personally participated yes. in training our doctors mm -hmm. uh, and, and the, the health professionals from at all levels on what is their role in nation building, in protecting our national interests and in protecting our security. Uh, we, the, the same case has been done to KRA, that I know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a witness. And I think this is the cause that needs to be extend, uh, extended across the field, but not at the lower. Before you get to the doctors and others, let's get our political elite yes. to go through it. Because they are the ones who are driving us. You wake up in the morning and say, you are going to shut up politicians. At what point will you tell us you are going to shut down the government? Yeah, because it is made, government is yes. made of all this. And these are formed because they are supposed to serve a certain purpose. The debate is, is the purpose for which agencies and organizations who are created solved or have we found a better alternative to that it's not about whether they are making profit or they're not making profit well when you when you when you work very hard in the high school and and, and get your grades yeah there are those students who will really want to do become doctors yeah. but when you don't get that straight air and all airs in the combination what you call mm -hmm. the cluster cluster the, then you can do other things. You, for example, you can go and do a, a degree in nursing or do a diploma in nursing. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we have right now in the country is doctors who are so basically very brilliant young boys and girls. Yes. And, 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 and the, the, the CECs in the county governments are nurses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get my point? Yeah. <laughs> and the governors invariably is somebody who probably had a C- minus himself but went through and got a certificate, a diploma, a degree and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. He, he, they, 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 it's like they enjoy, it's like a bit of sadism. Yes. Like he had a straight hair, but he's working for me now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, she's yeah, working yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have got a good But one of them has boasted that. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, so it's like this, the, the, we, 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 we are, we, we're going down, we're going down. A few cases where you had very brilliant guys who became governors, for example, Kwale government. Yes. You would never see here problems about Kwale. Mvuria mm -mm. did something unbelievable, unimaginable. I mean, that place is better than any other county in the country. Good. And then he, he, the role was taken over by an academic also, who was his deputy, a lady. Mm -hmm. She's doing a fantastic job right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we have certain brilliant guys who are 
but the heart here who have what it takes but do not have the resources. For example, the, the CEO of <coughs> Help Now, Regera, one, one guy called mm -hmm. Regera, mm -hmm. he's trying to do his best. I mean, he's, he's, he's a fantastic guy. The same also with the funding, Munari. Charles Stringera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they are, they, the other guy called, called Munari. Yes. But he doesn't have the money. You get my point. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, these are guys who really are, 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 are good. But, but what, I, what I'm trying to say is that we're not, we're not taking a, pr a brush and painting everything as, as mm -hmm. being dark. Mm -hmm. But there is need for this country, nation, to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. yes. We must have a conversation how this country is going to be in the future. Yeah. If you don't do that, uh, and then we're doomed. We're seriously yeah, doomed. Going anywhere. Uh, yeah, because, because the amount of wastage at the county levels is unimaginable. Mm -hmm. They can employ, every county can employ an additional 100 doctors just if they can be able to save on the wastages itself. I told you, I told you, there are, there are people working outside, who are living outside the country and earning salaries into their accounts here. Ghost workers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Ghost really, workers. Yeah. And they are known. And they are known. And they are known. And this are either families, friends, supporters, what have you, it's, it's all. And that drains 70%, 80% of the exchequer in the, or rather in the, of, of, the, of the resources at the county levels. If we can save and rationalize that, they, 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 they we'll be able to do a lot for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, before we come to, we have uh, Dr. Oliver Kesaka, who is the CEO of Corat Africa, saying, Professor Kagonya cannot say that government is not allowed to question the operations of parastatals, if indeed there are people unable to run institutions within budget of taxpayers' money, they should not be in office. Can, no. can, can I just finish? I was telling you something on the same also on the parastatal because I don't finish. You got me short. I thought you had finished. <laughs> no, 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 I hadn't finished. <laughs> on the issue of the parastatal, uh, Dr. Kagwanja, mm. uh, Professor Kagwanja, where the idea of putting National Oil Corporation there as a parastatal mm. was to make sure that the private sector does not take the country for a ride. Yeah. They rationalize for they are, they are consumer protection. Yeah. They, they will import oil, or oil, you know, all, all those what they call products, and give it at the right price so that when you just leave it only to the parastatals, then of course the country is going to be taken for a ride. And most of the, sorry, when you just leave it to the private That's sector. sector. Yeah. And those private sector were originally all multinationals, Shell, Ajib, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Corbill and, 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 and Caltex, Total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The idea was to protect Kenyans against that. But, but has, has, has National Oil done that? No. It's never done that. This, and and, it, and it, has not been, it has not been able to do that. Let, let, let's not no, no, can I, can I just finish? Can I just finish? Yeah. Every time an opportunity was given such a, to that, such a thing, there were thugs who were out there and yeah. who literally robbed that parastatal dry. Now, now, when you have the Kenya Creameries, Cooperative Creameries, whatever it is, yes. the new Kenya Cooperative Creameries, and, and, and the idea is to make sure that uh, Tuzo and Brookside and others do not take Kenyans for a ride. Yes. That you have, you have a competing, what they call a parastatal, yeah. which is going to buy from the farmers at a good price, and which is going to sell, put a marginal profits into it and sell it to the Kenyans. You protect the consumers. Are they doing that? You are, pro you are preaching to the converted. I agree, I agree with what so, you're to saying. Some, to some extent, when they fail to do their common yeah. debts, let them be folded. No, no, Why that's, they that's, so you are preaching to the converted. Yes, yes. We are not debating the subject. Yes. When you're doing a project planning, and I'm, I want to... You want to debate the principle? Uh, no, I want to... To, 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 to respond to, to Dr. Kisaka. Yes. Uh, but when you are doing a project planning, which is the same as planning for your country, and trust me, I've studied the planning of China, the planning of America, the planning, this is what you look at as a country. You start by identifying your priority. What is it that you want to... Uh, what problem do you want to solve? Mm -hmm. So you have identified the problem. Then you look at the means, the vehicle that you are going to solve that particular yes. problem. Yes. Right? And finally, you look at the personnel, the people, the brains, the hands that are going to drive that. The problem with the Kenyan debate is that we are de debating the irrelevant and not the relevant. I'm asking the fundamental question. Were the issues that were the problem that were meant to be solved by those structures relevant? I would not argue for the existence of the structure for its sake. I would, I'm not that dumb. I would, I would not argue for the survival of the... The only thing I would argue for the survival or for the sake of it is the Kenyan state. Yes. That's all. Yes. Nothing else. Under the Kenyan state, nothing is hurry, nothing is invariable, nothing cannot be disbanded. The only thing I would ask is, 
is the reason for which it was created to solve a problem of Kenyan mm -hmm. addressed. And now I'm saying the Kenya National Oil Corporation was created to ensure that Kenyans are not exploited by profit, I mean, the private the interests, yes. pr private interests, yes. whether they are local or international, yes. not multinationals alone, yes. local, private interests. The Kenya Creameries was created to safeguard the interests of Kenyans from private interests, yes. because some majority of, of Kenyans are poor people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some don't even know that they're being exploited. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem we had in the previous campaign, the 2022 campaign, was the argument that one private interest in the milk industry was overwhelming the, the republic. True or false, yes. or whether it was propaganda or not, but it was a Ken fact. Kenyans, Kenyans yeah. bought that, uh, that argument it's and they fact. found it. So I personally refuse to take my cow, my, my, my milk, to the private and I take it to KCC. Yes. The, 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 go check my record. Yes. I take it to the KCC. Yes. So when you cross KCC, you will have to tell me, as a Kenyan, yes. where I am going to take my milk. Because I am a file holder in KCC. The, the, are you getting it? And I did that by choice. Because my friends and Kranzmit hold the kid and kin, hold the private interest. Yeah. I chose not to go with the private interest, Thank you. but to go with the, right. the national interest. So or, if you tell me you're closing the KCC, tell me the alternative to it. I have no problem. Yeah. All right. I think no, uh, we, we should... Who is it that was put to mess up the apparatus? Yes. Because somebody was put there. Absolutely. So Absolutely. deal with the people who messed up Absolutely. the apparatus. Yes. You don't just close things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, are, you are not addressing the issue. Yes. All right. So uh, we are not here to defend the structures. Yeah. We are here to defend ideas that safeguard our nation as a country. I mean, uh, us as a people. And we know our interests. We, we've not reached a level that we no longer know our interests. We know them. Right. Dr. Kagonji, uh, not Kagonji, Kanenji, you've been very mealy mouthed. You, you want to close up with something on that, on that regard, just to what the contribution is? Yeah. I don't have habits of talking over people. I uh, also was taught to listen until your turn comes. Uh, especially we are sitting in the middle of wise men. Yeah, with politicians. And, uh, <laughs> so, y yes, um, I, th I think the problem, uh, you know, I partially agree, it's not about money. It is, the problem at the county level is our appetite for honey. And is what man can do for us. And increasingly, and I do agree, you have right now uh, people in uh, appointed positions uh, who are loading over way more competent people and they say I never thought I could be in a place like this sitting with the professors who are you know are answerable to me that should not be something to even be proud of that well I never know I could still remain an idiot and still really succeed in life because that's exactly what you're going to communicate mm. and it is something we have seen including even some unfortunately some even CC, CS members you know yes. who yes. O o o almost, you know, like, well, I could still fail an exam and still, you know, be your boss and stuff like that. And yeah. this is not the kind of culture and mentality we should encourage. Now, I do agree when it comes to the need for us to train uh, our elected officials about national interest. And in fact, uh, somehow, I don't know, Mishmua uh, here knows how, how they can do it in terms of changing laws, but. Uh, it should be something that you must be able to go through before you start earning your salary as a member of parliament or a member of county assembly, you know. And you have to demonstrate you attended all the days of that training. Mm -hmm. So you don't go in there and most of the time you're actually outside on your phone or you're doing other things and say, well, I have a certificate because we know how easily you can be able to get a certificate by paying a couple of thousands and then you get it for free, you know. And the reason why this is, is it's not because we're elitist. No, it's because, you see, you cannot represent and build what you don't know. You can't be able to contribute to something you don't even understand. And with the increasing mentality of a primitive accumulation as the driving force towards a lot of some of our people into getting into politics as well as into you know, government from the county to the national government, if we don't force some kind of a mind change, not everybody's going to change. But at least if you can get some critical mass within those representatives to have some understanding and appreciate the complexity of statecraft, mm -hmm. it's really going to go a long way. I've always said that uh, uh, 
I may differ with a number of countries, you know, foreign policies, including our ally, the United States. But there's one thing you can't fault them. Uh, when it comes to citizens as well as their representatives, they are extremely loyal and patriotic to their country. Mm -hmm. You know, and rarely are you going to, uh, to see them going out there openly trying to work against the interests of their country. And that's the kind of patriotism we should have. It should not be a privilege. Thank you. It's a right. It's a right. All right, let's turn the clock now to Senegal, where Senegal's anti-establishment candidate, that is Basiro Diomaye Faye, is set to become president after his main rival on Monday, that is March the 25th, recognized his victory in elections that came barely days after he was freed from prison. Faye, who is 44, has promised left-wing pan-Africanism and to renegotiate gas and oil contracts with Senegal due to start production on recently discovered oil and gas reserves later this year. His main rival from the governing coalition, Amadou Ba, recognized Faye's win in the first round of the vote and offered his congratulations. A statement said Faye had appeared clearly ahead of the 62-year-old former Prime Minister Ba, according to provisional results from individual polling stations published by local media and on social networks. Officials' results are expected before the end of the week. An absolute majority was required for a first round win. Fire was released from a prison 10 days before the election and a rapidly passed amnesty law. Let's just listen in. Vision of society. I hope that our vision of society has given substance to their aspirations. I pledge to govern with humility and transparency and to fight corruption at all levels. We intend to turn this page, to reconcile hearts, to reconcile the Senegalese people. Interesting there. And uh, this is what now is packing this particular editorial cartoon there, Senegal. In prison opposition, candidates to president-elect from the slammers and you can see i can see the president of somalia there with a padlock trying also to make sure that uh, prisoners who are there who are potentially maybe have what it takes to be president are not allowed out of a prison and uh, we can see who is that on that particular door if you may recognize that particular face is this uh asafawoki asafawoki yes uh, Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah is, uh, that is uh, richard as well mm. and we have uh, yoro Museveni and uh, also kagame the and uh, the, the other one was spectacle. The, no, mm. Mm. that one is Mugambe. No, no, that's that, this that's not Mugambe. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a Paul yeah. Beer. That's Paul Beer. Oh, the, well, the, the, one, the, the one with the padlock. The one with the padlock is. Paul oh, it's a Paul Beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Paul Beer. Yeah. 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 Mm. The one in spectacle is Kagame. The other one is Museveni. The other one is dead. That's Mugambe. Is that Mugabe really? Yeah, because I don't, I don't <laughs> know. He looks like Mugabe. No. He <laughs> looks like Mugabe. It's a guy from Togo. Is a, is a, is a, yeah. Togo. Right. Togo or. Uh, Victoria Guinea. Victoria Guinea. Victoria Guinea. Victoria Guinea. Victoria Guinea. They had. Yeah. A, yes. Victoria Guinea. They have a. They had a coup. No. 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 Somebody has been there for quite a yeah. while. Okay. That's Victoria Guinea. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about this uh, recent development. What it does really send, especially <coughs> with the generation generation exit. Uh, or the, yeah, they call it generation exit. That we can see new faces happening, especially within Central Africa. Talk about uh, Guinea. Uh, talk about uh, Mali, they say this they Mali, say the Mali they say this is the youngest Faso. president in, in Africa I, I think uh, historically that is not true is it Which one? Uh, I, I him being the youngest the one, one of those military guys is younger no. than him we, well, if you remember remember yeah, yeah, Tom, yeah, Thomas uh, Sankara and the rest no first of all that, that no, no. whoever said he's the youngest uh, you know they don't have a very good grasp of history that's what I'm saying yeah. Kabila came to power at age 29 mm -hmm. remember yeah. yeah, Joseph. Robert, you know. Yeah. Yes. So, Gaddafi. So, Gaddafi. Yeah, Gaddafi, exactly, you know. Gaddafi was 29 also. 29. Yeah. Yeah, uh, people have been fairly young. Kagame was, Kagame was 39, mm. I think, when he came to power in 84. Uh, Seven was fairly young, yeah. you know, so uh, in 30s.
It's or the youngest or, 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 or the I think crop. Yeah, on the current crop, I think that's no, what no, they meant, not, not historic. still not the youngest in the current crop because they, 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 yeah. they are the, one of these military guys. Yes. Traore. 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 Traore is younger. He's in the 30s. Yeah. He's, I he's think, think the are yeah. 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 yeah, he's, not, he's in the 30s. 34, 34. Yes. But uh, is it a legitimate government so that we can say... It is a legitimate She wants to take over the instruments of government and it is a legitimate. Yeah. Legitimacy yeah, yeah, yeah. comes to... <laughs> no. You must power, legitimacy, legitimacy does not only come out of, uh, out of uh, the ballot. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Legitimacy <laughs> comes when there's no contestation. I think... Uh, <laughs> the, the, okay. well, there's the something we've been talking about, uh, you know, for a while now. And uh, when I'm looking at West Africa, it, uh, there's something unique also about it, especially in Franco Africa, as they call it. In Franco Africa. It doesn't mean that that is going to spread in other parts of Africa with regard to young people coming to power per se. Mm. But <coughs> young people in Franco Africa represent a new thinking with regard to how they see their countries in relation to France and the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these changes, as you have seen, they've been inspired a lot more by the dissatisfaction uh, by the current generation about the scenes. Uh, that were committed by their forefathers in entering into what they thought was an unholy alliance with foreign powers. And in this case, unfortunately, you know, that major foreign power happens to be, you know, France. Now, there is always a joke, uh, at least among African commentators, that in West Africa there are two countries. There's Nigeria and there's France. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And while that may sound funny, it's actually also very sad. And I think it's time... Uh, France, you know, reevaluated its engagement with the continent. But because of that dissatisfaction, it's also affecting especially uh, French Africa's attitude to much of the West in general, because uh, the Western, uh, the, 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 the French are seen as representative of the West. So even those countries <coughs> in the West that may not really be having uh, any uh, serious misgivings within, you know, f French Africa, of course, they're going to be lumped into one little large pool mm -hmm. as being complicit in what, uh, you know, a lot of West Africans have been you know, satisfied with. Uh, but that's also a message, again, to, uh, to, the, to the African Union and as well as, you know, African leadership. Now, uh, immediately after the successive coups in West African Sahel, what we saw is ECOWAS uh, moved very quickly, you know, to try and impose sanctions and even discuss potential about deploying military. Mm -hmm. Of course, those sanctions have since been dropped. I think in recognition that the ground, on the ground things are different and that the sentiment of a lot of young Africans, especially in West Africa, is against uh, what they perceive as extreme foreign uh, uh, intervention in, mm -hmm. their country, in, in their countries. Now, but this also uh, says something uh, to, to the continent, that our, our, our youth bulge can be a dividend if we are able to provide opportunity for them, but at the same time, they can cause complete uh, change, shift in the political dispensation of a country. That can come either peacefully or it can come violently. Now, what I wish Mia here was talking about legitimacy, and especially in, in terms of West Africa coup, because someone was going to argue otherwise, is those coups turn out to be very popular coups in those countries. And they seem to resonate with the majority of the citizens. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that uh, Fai, uh, who is a protege of Sonko, who is in prison, or who has just got released from prison. Remember, this current new president-elect has only been out of prison for two weeks, yeah. and he becomes yeah. president-elect, yeah. 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 you know. Yes. It speaks to a changing uh, trajectory mm -hmm. in West Africa, but also in much of Africa that our leadership needs to start paying attention to. When I say our leadership mm -hmm. is the established leadership has been there on the continent. Mm -hmm that we may not be speaking to the needs and interests and hopes of the young people. But not to diminish the role of the youth, because 
one of the things we've seen in the media is that this person has just been fueled by, by the youth. Mm -hmm. But that is not true. There are a lot of, a lot of intellectuals, as fact I dare argue, majority of intellectuals actually supported uh, uh, fires, uh, you, you know, uh, rise to power. Mm -hmm. Now, part of it, because there's been a debate between maintenance of the status quo among sometimes African intellectuals, especially who favored continued engagement with uh, uh, foreign capitals, and those ones who seek to shift away, a paradigm shift, you know, to uh, start engaging in a world in which they see as a multipolar world. I think it's worth noting that Faye, he's an extremely eloquent speaker, both in French and in the English language, mm -hmm. if we watched him. Yes. So he has a very good understanding of the complexities of the Western world, and he will talk about the East just with as much competence as talks about the West. Mm -hmm. But then there is also another emergent uh, sense of uh, Pan-Africanism that is also driving some of these desires to take ownership. Now, to the extent to which he's going to go in implementing some of the changes, of course, you know, the jury is still out there. Mm -hmm. But the trajectory that we can see the continent taking is that we need to pay attention to where the people are because people recognize that the world has changed and African publics are seeking to have more agency in running their affairs. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it would be a kind of an overreach uh, to an extent to generalize the Senegalese situation uh, for the African uh, you know, environment. Um, and I say, so, I say so from my own personal experience. In the 1980s, uh, at the heyday of authoritarianism, majority of African intellectuals took refuge. Those who did not want to go to Europe or America took refuge in Senegal. I know uh, uh, people like Samir Amin, mm -hmm. our own people here, Bujra and others. Uh, you, you can talk about um, Tadikam Kandawire and others. Mm -hmm. Our own Anyang Yongo and others were more comfortable uh, in exile in Senegal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Senegal has a very exceptional distinction on the African continent, which other countries don't have. Mm -hmm. Remember, we've never had a military coup in that country. Mm -hmm. And in, in a, in a, in a place, situation, situation where uh, a number of countries like Ghana have had more than 20, almost 20 coups. Nigeria has had uh, many, many coups and so on. But Senegal has been an isolated place uh, in terms of peace. Uh, the founding father of that country, the Paul Sego, uh, actually experimented on Western democracy, the liberal democracy, by creating ideological parties. So the, the, the Senegalese take their governance a little bit seriously, mm -hmm. and they want to see whether what can work and what cannot work. And even when they have enemies, they recognize their enemies for what they can offer. Sheikh Ante Diop uh, was not a good friend of Sego and others. Yeah. But they respected that he was a great brain yeah. and named their university after, uh, you know, Sheikh Ante Diop. Yes. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many people in Kenya would want to name a university after Professor Mugai, the yes. one you mentioned in the morning, yes, yes, because yes, he put yes. our medical, uh, you know, uh, field. skills field yeah, yeah. on a an proper, even kill. Proper, a proper trajectory, kill. Yeah. Yes, trajectory. Yeah. Nobody would do that. Yeah. But in Senegal, they honor their enemies because their enemies are worth. Now, that is how you have seen the stability of that country. Look at it this way. No, no person has ever been elected in Senegal who is the favored of the regime. The Aurebos, Maxal, was actually elected, you know, he was shielded by women. Uh, if you, you mm -hmm. I, I mean, Binta Diops and others were the ones who were literally his campaign. And they were all frustrated with him when he could not deliver. Now, so the election of Basiru is something, is not something new. Mm -hmm. It is the, the, the quest by Senegalese for freedom, the quest for a leader that they have elected themselves, not imposed from above. And that's where uh, uh, Dr. Ali is, is, is correct here. The impulse among the Senegalese to be free is palpable. And the moment, I am happy that the Dakar was the first country I landed to, the, the, the first African city 
I ran to in, uh, in the 1980, late mm -hmm. 1980s. Mm -hmm. I traveled from here to Egypt to, to do uh, Ethiopia to Dakar. And the moment you run in Dakar, you, you smell the air of freedom and people who want to be free and yeah, who well. have no, you know. So Senegal is a very good example uh, of, of freedom in Africa. You can look at it, uh, compare with Namibia. Mm -hmm. And Makamu Tua, Professor, uh, wrote very eloquently about Namibia and what it can offer to Africa. Previously, we were writing about Botswana. So there, and people have talked uh, at least about Kenya, mm -hmm. our, our, our own country, and our ability to talk our way out of problems. Yes. yes. When we are almost on the tipping edge, you know, we somehow talk our way and, cajole, uh, and cajole our way into the African Union and other quarters, but the end result is that we don't tip. We don't go beyond the tipping point. Mm -hmm. Now, so there are those countries, for example, Tanzania, mm -hmm. and it's cool, political temperaments, from time to time anti-opposition, but a very, very strong political structure, that country. Mm -hmm. So Africa is beginning to give those pictures, but I wanted us to point at Senegal. The fiery defense of freedom, the fiery defense of the people's will, it is unequaled anywhere on the African continent. Thank you. Right. Let's hear from yeah. Professor Bashar. One, uh, in 1951, and Kwame Nkrumah came from jail <laughs> into the white, into the big house. Uh, so the, what has happened in Senegal is almost a repeat of that. Uh, second, uh, this young man, because he's young, mm -hmm. has also shown some very interesting thing. He has two wives. Yes. So mm -hmm. we don't know which one will be first, first lady and then <laughs> secondly. But he's working with both, eh? He the, said they are mine, eh? The one with four kids, I think, will be the first one. Yeah. <laughs> first, first and the second. So, because that's a very nice picture. He's not saying they are, they are his, so he's, uh, he's my wife, eh? Uh, good picture. But uh, I think he also won because of that wave in West Africa. The Niger. Mali, Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. That wave is in Senegal, and he's representing that wave. Um, and the statements he made, or somebody made on his behalf, whichever, there's a debate whether he was the one or somebody else, somebody else were, but it was very eloquent, eh? and very touching on what the aspirations of Senegal are, or should be. And the question is, will we be able to hold them, yeah. continue? or he will be sabotaged. Uh, but um, actually it was Kenneth uh, Bobby sent me a message. Said, the guy, maybe, is he going to be his Sankara? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sankara, know, yes. Because, uh, you know, the, what happened to Sankara? And um, the, what happened to Lumumba? People who come out very, initially very strongly, are standing for something. There's risk. Yeah. They should also be aware that they can die. And it can be organized. So, uh, hoping that he's aware of that, then it makes sense to continue, take a stand, and then I think he will attract a lot of attention. And uh, he's got good examples in um, in those places in um, Mali mm -hmm. and in um, Burkina Faso and Niger. So he's similarly would just join this bandwagon of revolutions, because these are revolutions. Eh? We will th throw the system. And you come up with something better, hopefully. But in so doing, also be ready for roughness. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, the other side is not very polite. Mm -hmm. They can uh, do some serious damage. Yeah, Dibal, uh, I, I, exactly as uh, Professor Kegwanja put it, Senegal is, uh, is a unique situation. I think the closest to Senegal would be Kenya. Yeah. And, and not even that close, not mm. even that close, mm. by a mile, but in terms of stability and the, the, the uh, similarities in the manner economy operates in that place, there's a lot. Senegal had Senghor, mm. Leopold Senghor, yep. as the president, a celebrated poet. He was a deputy in the French, what do you call uh, uh, parliament? Uh, parliament. Yes. Yes. It has a 97% population Muslims. Yes. And he had a president, the first president was a Christian. Mm. Yeah. He comes from less than, I think, about, about a percent, one yeah, percent, yeah. Because there are also some traditionalists. 
and, and, and he stayed there for the longest. Then he, at the right moment, exited and allowed his uh, Diouf, Abdul Diouf, Abdul Diouf yes. to take over. Mm -hmm. And all this time, there was somebody who was opposed to them called Wade. Yes. Mm -hmm who again became the president at the age of 70-something, almost 80. Yes. And stayed for a while, and then Maki Sal, I think, took over from him. So, so, so it, it has, it has uh, you know, you can go there and you sell your wares and you sell your ideology, and if it, uh, you're able to sell very well, there you are. But again, if you fail to deliver, mm. they, they know how to get rid of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, French, the French have never, have never won a war. Since, since Napoleon Bonaparte. Yep. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. The only people that have, they have succeeded very hard in fighting are Africans. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, they created how many coups in uh, Comoros, for example, mm -hmm. and how many coups did they create in the West African countries that they, one way or the other, controlled? Many. But they never won, you know, they were the original people who were Indochina, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and the rest of it. The, the French were there. Mm -hmm. But when the French, you know, they, they sucked in the Americans into it and, and then took off because they were, being, they were chased out, literally. Uh, they were chased out of uh, Algeria uh -huh. uh, at high cost, very high cost. Uh -huh. and, and have never won a war. I mean, these people have been, uh, in a sense... If they won football. They, 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 they won football. By That's the what my friend said. Well, it, it, was, it was won for them by, by, by Africans and, and, and Middle Eastern stock. <coughs> North Africans and... You know what I mean, eh? The, 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 that, that team was almost all from Africa. Zinedine Zidane is from, I think, Algeria or from Morocco, and, and all the rest of them, Tigana, Tig, you know, yeah. Tigana, Tigana. Yeah. Tigana was a black man. Yeah. I mean, they were all non French. I think there was one or two who were French, pure French. Right. But anyway, now, exactly as he puts it, the risk is will they try and do what they used to do before? get rid of the leaders and kill them the way they killed the Belgians, killed uh, Patrice Lumumba, they themselves also killed uh, uh, Sankara, Thomas Sankara. Are they going to try and do that? I don't think they can do that now. It, it's, it's way beyond that. Uh, the three countries have already brought in Wagner, you know that. Yep. Uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger already do have Wagner. Wagner there. The French have no capacity now to do anything in that place. Uh, I, I talked to a friend, and I'm not going to mention his name, who is a f head of state in Africa one time. I was talking about uh, this guy who was made to get rid of his father, mm. Idris Deby. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. The son mm. got rid of the father. Yeah. Yes. You, you get my point? Yeah, yes. And, and, and this head of state told him, why? Why are you selling your country to the French? He told him, look, i show you my house is here, and right next to me there's a, there's a French military camp. Mm. The French military presence with the helicopters and everything else is just... Yes. It's a shouting distance for me. Mm -hmm. So if I tell them today, don't do this right, tomorrow they get rid of me. Mm. They will use other, mm -hmm. other guy, just get one of the colonels or the generals or the majors that they, they have trained themselves, that they control and give orders to and tell them to go and get rid of you and become the president. And they will do it. So I think that now will come to an end. In my opinion, it will come to an end. And when he talks like this, uh, and it's coming through a democratic process, the, the rage of the people is also going to be massive. Of course. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The masses will not accept the French. And right now, the French are being chased out of the entire West African region. And the Americans too. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the French also have a smart way of sucking in the Americans when they know that they are going to lose themselves mm -hmm. and leaving the Americans to hold the baby. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and that's why Niger got rid of the Americans also. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they will all get rid of them. Oh, yeah. And by the way, for your information, let me tell you one thing. All these terrorist organizations, Boko Haram, Al Shabaab, ISIS, uh, um, uh, Al Qaeda in Maghrib, are creations of the American, the British, the Israeli, and, 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 the, and the French, what they call intelligence services. So they are not terrorists? No, these are terrorists created by them to justify their presence in there so that they can take away the resources. Hanenji mm -hmm. has no job after uh, this. Come by yes. <laughs> In fighting terrorists. I have no job after this. If you go by your thesis, and, 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 uh, I'll give you just one simple example. These people who pretend to be the, the saviors of the Muslims that we're going to fight for the Muslims, yeah. what have they done about Gaza? None of them talks about it. Have you ever heard al Shab talking about Gaza? No. Yeah. Have you ever heard about uh, the only The only genuine Islamic organization that was very moderate and very conservative in, in its own ways and then essentially was 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 actually and everybody finds them very good are the talibans yeah, yeah.
and the Taliban's got rid of Al-Qaeda. They got rid of Al-Qaeda completely and say, you do not fit into our own aspirations. And right now, the West is happy because in uh, Afghanistan, the least medical corruption right now since they came in, yeah. systems are working. Drugs, drugs, they have clamped down on drugs. Yeah. Uh, uh, the poppies yeah. are no longer there. Yeah. So the very West that fought them for all these years are getting a very good partner in this because they say, because of their faith, they can be trusted. <laughs> so, so, so in a sense, when I tell you that all these terrorist folks who run around here, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. And I'm, 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 not rumor, but the reality has it that al-Baghdadi was actually a member of the Mossad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure you've seen that bit. He, he was a member of the Mossad. He was a Jew, for, for all intents and purposes. But of course, trained in the Arabic and the religion and everything else, and came in as the Emir. And, 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 and what did the Americans do when they were coming in? They walked out of that country place and allowed them to take over all those Humvees and all those materials and all those weapons so they could wreak havoc on the rest. Effectively, right now, the part, portion of Syria where they still occupy with the support of the Americans, the, the oil comes out of that, goes straight to the Americans. So, so in a sense, let me tell you, it's all about economics. It's all about resources. Mm -hmm. So the discovery of oil there, uh, that's uh, yeah, going to be... Uh, yeah. uh, it's going to become very... Uh, in I, Senegal, you mean? Yes, in Senegal. In a, any country that has got resources, yeah. any country that has got resources, there will be problems. Yeah, I, but I, I wanted us to expand this debate a little bit, yes. uh, which started with Professor Bansharia, and now mm -hmm. you have also touched on it, about what is the future of Basilu, uh, the, 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 the young president. Uh, and and, and the, the one scenario that's coming out uh, clearly from yourselves is that he, he might be assassinated, or they going the Rumumba way, uh, or going the Sankara way, and so on. But, but I want to point to more, more subtle way of, of the Westerners have owned over the years. It has become a better way. For Nkrumah to be taken to prison, uh, because he was deliberately taken to the prison by the British, yeah. it was basically to, 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 prepare, take, him, prepare, him to, take to, to prepare him to take over uh, and uh, to and make him docile. Uh, yeah. Because part of the reason why we go to the... To, for, for uh, and Nigeria, Kenyatta, why do you go that far? Kenyatta, Kenyatta. No, we, are go, we, are Kenyatta. we are moving, we are moving. <laughs> uh, Jomo was also, you know... He was not a freedom put, fighter. Put yeah, in, yeah <laughs> the, 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 everybody knows. He, he was so, accommodated. He was accommodated. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, there the, the, the are stories about, about that. And, and it is true. When Mandela in prison, when he was taken to prison, he was a prisoner. Yeah. At a certain time, he ceased to be a prisoner and become part of the debate. He became a guest. He, a guest of, <laughs> of, of, the, of the state in prison. And this is what uh, Oliver Tambo, Tambo Becky and others who had problems with. Because the Mandela they knew. Was different from the new Mandela. Was different from the Mandela they, they were showing. Well, that doesn't mean that he, he, he lost the fire no, no. as a nationalist. No. That Jomo lost the fire as a nationalist. Or oh, Nkrumah ceased to be a nationalist. Ultimately, they had to get rid of Nkrumah at the end of the day. The point here is, we need to look, to begin to looking at the new ways of uh, what co-optation of the leadership uh, by way of being bureaucratized. Though you are invited to France as a head of state and you are subjected to debate and all the, the nice things, uh, you move to the United States and all. And that's what is happening in this country. Open, a, open an account for you in the Swiss <coughs> open bank? Open an, an account somewhere. <laughs> so, so leaders, that's how leaders are co-opted. And, and you lose your original ideology. And that's what happened to Maxal. Maxal came in the way Basilu has come in. But became an, uh, but, but by the end of the day, capitalist. he was worse because he, his favorite destination the, or destination was Paris. It was Paris and, and, and others. So what's the big issue? The, the real threat is not the going the, the Sankara way or going the Rumumba way. It is losing your soul. <laughs> and the, you better lose, you can, talk can about I, losing the body, can I, can I just, about losing the, the soul. Can, can I just <laughs> support you on that basis only <laughs> with, a, with a little bit of tinkering? <laughs> you, you said that in Kenya we have a way of going the brinkmanship and then right at the edge yes. we, 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 we pull back. Pull back yes. You know why? Yeah. 
It's the same guys who talk to one another because they're both, they're both capitalists. Yeah. But they're both very wealthy. <laughs> Thinking wealthy. <laughs> they're both very wealthy. Uh, he, the man who claims that he lost his votes, he was yeah. stolen from him, yeah. is extremely wealthy. Yeah. You, you, can, you can lose the vote, but you cannot lose your wealth. No, you can't. So then you, then you talk about and say, negotiate and say, no, what's the price? I'll pull back from the break my ship, but then what's the price? In the, mean, in the meantime, what will I be eating? No, no. What's the, what's the, what's, what, what, do you, what do you have on the table? What do you have on the what table for me? Yes. Uh, that's it. Uh, no, I have the African <laughs> Union for you. <laughs> Not only that. Yeah. <laughs> and in addition to that, I'll have XYZ going here and there. So the total wealth you are going to get from this is That's this. why one time they keep calling one another, including calling uh, things that I cannot even repeat, you know. And the next thing you know is my brother, my brother, my brother. You know what I mean? They immediately become brothers again. These brothers are interesting. <laughs> They're interesting brothers. <laughs> All right, brothers, also, we need to take a short break, uh, brothers. <laughs> this is uh, what also we want to discuss when we cycle back. Uh, back like he never left. This is uh, Museveni's son, General Mohozi. He's now Army Chief. After his promotion coming at a time, the veteran leader is going for seventh term, if we just pick it up as we take a short break. And uh, the question is, is standby generator? And I think uh, Professor Peter Kagwanja attempted to answer this, and uh, Dr. Kanenji as well. So we'll ask uh, Farah Malim. Uh, if we just have it so that we may see what we're talking about. Is standby generator now on <coughs> or off? Right? Back like he never left. Is standby generator on? Is it now on or off? Right? So, Farah Malim BD thinking about it. Marinate over it. When you circle back, we begin with you. Uh, back to life when you're talking about uh, generation exits as well. Mohoz is what is up the collective sleeve of President Museveni with this uh, reappointment of uh, the send back in uh, the army.